Hey everybody, it's Mark again, and uh, it's time to repair another clock. Um, it's not a cuckoo clock, but it's something similar. And I'm wearing one of uh, Seth Linkfelter's clock shirts. This is a clock shirt that he designed. There's, every so often you'll see some guy post a posting to one of the clock groups saying my child who's autistic developed this shirt and they're selling them well that's a bunch of crap because Seth Linkfelter is the person that uh, created these shirts and I'm going to leave a link at the end of this uh, uh, video to his channel he does professional videos uh, even if you don't buy a shirt please subscribe to his channel um, you can contact him to uh, create you a clock shirt I have done that on a couple of different occasions and my shirts are for sale on Redbubble Seth doesn't make a lot of money on these shirts uh, he sells them on Redbubble and he gets like two dollars a shirt so um, he does it because he loves clocks and what better way to um, show somebody the love that you have or the passion that you have than to wear a shirt around that has something to do with clocks anyway grab something to eat grab something to drink grab something to smoke if you choose to do so and let's learn things and don't forget to hit the subscribe button because it's free to do so. And please leave me comments. And hit that like button. Um, Facebook algorithm. The more people that hit the like button on my videos, the more my videos get distributed throughout YouTube. I think I said Facebook a while ago. But anyway, throughout YouTube, so please hit the like button. Um, please subscribe to my channel. Please leave me comments. You know, out of all my videos, I, I rarely get any comments. And I want to hear feedback from y'all to say, you're doing great or you suck. Please leave me feedback. Um. And let's get started. Now this is a a novelty clock. It's what's known as a novelty clock. It's sold by the same people that sell cuckoo clocks. It's a 30 hour novelty clock. Um, it comes with a simple pendulum. And if you don't have the wire, you can make a wire out of any wire that is somewhat hard to bend. And typically, 225 or less weight is what this takes. It's normally about 180 grams of weight. But this particular clock... Is made by Emil Smeckenbecker. And I love E. Smeckenbecker clocks. I have several of them. They're the company that made the Farmer's Daughter clock. They're the company that, that made the uh, uh, cathedral ch church uh, uh, clock that they copied from the uh, church in Germany. They made several clocks, and I have several of them. Um, in order to service this clock, of course, you take the hands off, and you undo these two screws. And let me show you the movement real fast. You undo this door right here, and there it says Emil Schmeckenbecker of Germany. Now, this clock will be easy to work on but honestly it doesn't need to be serviced because when I put the weight on the pendulum leader 
swings back and forth. So the only thing we're going to do to this clock is take the movement out and give it a coat of fresh oil and put it back together. So it's going to be a, a, a hopefully a quick video on doing that. So taking the hands off, you unscrew the nut. You have a container to put your parts in, and I use microwavable food containers. If you're married, these containers will prevent you from getting in arguments with your spouse. Taking the hour hand off, and then taking a screwdriver, because in order to get the movement out, you have to take the face off. A lot of times these bases are glued on or nailed on. In this case, there's two screws that hold this uh, base on. So, one screw off. And they're called novelty clocks because... People spend the money to go to Germany, to go to the Black Forest, and they go to all these um, uh, clock shops that are selling cuckoo clocks. Well, a lot of times people spent, you know, their hard-earned wages on getting to Germany and staying in Germany that they don't have ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 to buy some of these expensive clocks. So they'll spend about a hundred and fifty dollars on something like this as a reminder of their trip they want something to uh, from the black force they want something to remind them of their trip so they buy something like this and then in this case if I was to take this movement out which I'm not going to do you you just basically pull the movement out because they have these bent over tabs. So the only thing that I'm going to do is put a fresh coat of oil on the pivots and on the birch assembly and then put it back together. I'm going to go ahead and show you this movement anyway. The cool thing about this clock is it's got these four nuts on it. A lot of these clocks have got bent over tabs that you have to straighten in order to take the rear plate off. But because Emil Smeckenbecker, or very smart company, I wish they were still in business, um, they put nuts, these uh, uh, thumb style nuts on this movement so you can easily take it apart so let me go ahead and put some oil on this thing you don't have to have fancy clock oilers here I have motor oil zero uh, W20 motor oil Castro and you want to make sure it starts with a zero um, for your clock oil for movement and here I have a toothpick uh, the you you can use a piece of wire that you take a hammer and bend the put a flat end on the end of the wire and I have some of those uh, not that wire but I have some that I made but most of the time I use a toothpick because the wood soaks up the oil and allows you to just drop a drop of oil where you want it to drop and we're just putting a minute drop of oil on the pivot holes Because there's a hole there, when you touch the stick to the hole, 
it drops into the uh, beveled edge of the hole. Um, and you have to do it to both the front and the rear of the plate. If you get too much oil on, take your rag and just wipe it off. More than likely, the oil is back in the pivot hole, but uh, let that soak a little bit, and then I'm going to take a rag and just touch it, and the oil is where I want it to be. And I also want to put a drop of oil on the uh, ratcheting system of this clock. In this case, it's a spring. And like I said, you want to put a drop of oil on the verge assembly. This part right here is the verge and crutch assembly. This and this are entry and exit pallets. So you want to put a drop of oil on the entry and the exit pallet. And then you want to uh, put the clock in motion so that drop of oil goes around the escapement wheel. So I'm going to put this back together and then I'm going to take up some uh, new life or old English oil or something and touch up the wood of this clock and then put it back together so uh, stand by here I have the uh, movement attached it's in it's level I have my beat amplifier on it it's not quite in beat and it'll stop here in a second And whichever side it stops on, I'm going to bend the crutch assembly. Here it stopped to the left, so I'm going to bend the crutch assembly to the right slightly. I said to the right, I meant to the left. Whichever side it stops on is the side that you want to bend it toward. And there it stopped to the left, so I'm going to bend it to the left again some. This clock runs great. And then automatically it just uh, messes up. So what I did, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. I took a green marker. And I put a dot. Just right inside here. So I'm going to start it again, and I'm going to see if that green dot is in the same area when it quits. And if it is, it tells me that there's a tooth bent. I had trouble putting that green dot on and there it is so I want to take the movement out and see if I can find a bent tooth on the escapement wheel 
I went ahead and took the movement apart. Uh, I cleaned it in my ultrasonic cleaner. I just want to show you how this ratchet wheel works. It's simple. It's got this pinion gear here. There's a spring wrapped around the, um, the shaft. And then as it ratchets, this part right here goes underneath one of these six arms, I guess you would call it. And the spring allows it to move up and down like so. This pushes on the spring, which gives you your ratcheting system. So if it's too loose of a ratcheting system, pushes pinion gear down further. If it's too tight of a ratcheting system, you probably have to push this pinion gear up or these fingers on this piece right here you could lift them and loosen the ratcheting system also. But putting this back together, I noticed the second wheel this section right here it's got a little burr on it. So I'm going to go ahead and take my Dremel and clean that up. I no longer see a burr or feel a burr. So uh, let's put this thing back together. I'm going to clean up the escapement wheel also. With a wire brush, with the thing in between my fingers, a wire brush on my rotary tool, turn it on. When you get the sweet spot, it'll automatically start rotating in your fingers. As you can see it cleans it up now you have to have tough skin to do this because the Dremel is going you know 30,000 RPMs per minute possibly and so isn't the wheel that you're working on Not everybody could do that. Um, I don't have a lot of nerves. Feelings in my fingers. My feet are tough. These wire brushes throw little little pieces off and they get my floor and they get my feet and I might have a piece of wire in my foot for two weeks before it starts hurting. Here um, 
a couple of weeks ago, I had my daughter come over and take a piece of wire out of my foot. She found four other pieces of wire in the same foot. So, again, my feet are tough. I have a magnet over there, and every so often I take a magnet to my floor. I don't know if I'm going to be able to put this thing together on camera. Because I'm looking over the camera. And I took a file to the uh, birch assembly. To smooth out the pallets. Wrong, wrong way, Mark. It's not a cuckoo clock. And I screwed everything up when I did that. And let's try it again. The biggest thing, as I say before, is getting all four knots started. If you could do that, you're halfway home. And because I cleaned the movement, I got to re-oil the movement. Um, I looked for a, a bent tooth on the uh, skateboard wheel. My eyesight isn't the greatest. Uh, after a while, they all start looking out of whack to me. But I think cleaning the movement up which what I should have done in the first place is going to solve my issue. Time to re-oil the movement and put this thing back in the case. I, I get in the discussion with people all the time about end shake. A clock has to have end shake in every one of the wheels or the the clock will not run. End shake is back and forth movement of each gear or wheel from front plate to back plate. Even the birch and crutch assembly has to have end shake. Most of the time, when you do bushings, um, when you put a bushing in, is when you typically will have problems with a clock not having end shake in each of the gear. And in a case like that, you might have to file the bushing, but here is the second wheel back and forth, up and down from front plate to rear plate movement is what end shake is. The escapement wheel, same way. Burge and crutch assembly, same way. The main wheel, 
same way. It's not side to side. It's up and down from front plate to rear plate. In a case like this, if, let's say, the second wheel didn't have in shake, it might be that this uh, stem off this main plate here might have got bent towards the movement, and you could take a screwdriver and pry it out to get in shake. Unless you put bushings in, um, that is normally the uh, only time that y you don't have in shake. Um, your pivot hole, uh, your pivots could have a burr on them preventing in shake. So, again, every wheel has to have in shake to include the birch and crutch assembly, which is not a wheel. Every wheel, main wheel, second wheel, escapement wheel being the third wheel, has to have in shake, which is up and down from rear plate to front plate, up and down movement. If it, if you have to force it up and down, you don't have in shake. It has to be free in shake. Now, if you have the power on the clock, for example, if this was a spring driven clock and you wind it all up, you're not going to be able to do this with the main gear and the second gear. You might be able to do it with the escapement wheel, but you need to take your power off before you check for in shake. The same way with the weight driven clock, you have to take the weight off to check the wheels for in shake. Up and down movement, not back and forth movement, but up and down from front plate to rear plate is what I'm doing. I'm moving the wheel from front plate to rear plate to check for in shake. And you might have to get a pair of tweezers to do such, to check for in shake. But again, every movement, every clock movement has to have in shake in each one of the wheels to include the birch and crutch assembly before it can work. I never had a novelty clock give me a novelty clock of this style give me such fits before. As you can see, the uh, pendulum leader wire, the crutch assembly, just ticks away. And it'll do that, and then all of a sudden it'll come to a abrupt stop. And again, it tells me that there's a bent tooth or the the uh, pivot itself uh, needs needs um, polish, and I didn't check for that when I had the thing apart. But you know, the videos that I create are to teach folks to so we can learn together. We teach together. Um, I want to have problems. That way I can solve the problems. That way I can tell you what to do. Again, it, it immediately stops. Put it like that. 
it'll start back up. So again, it's telling me, obviously, the uh, birch assembly, birch crutch assembly, it's bent halfway correct because it sits there and bounces back and forth. But because it abruptly stops, just like that, it tells me there's a bent tooth or a pivot issue. As you can see, uh, cleaning all that up, doing what I did with the pendulum off, it sits here and takes away where before the uh, escapement wheel would turn one revolution and then it would get stuck and you'd have to touch the uh, the crutch assembly before it would um, start ticking again and so now I should be able to put the uh, pendulum on and it continues to tick Because uh, in this short presentation, the escapement wheel has rotated probably three or four turns, maybe more. Sometimes even a, a, a small novelty clock like this, and that's be it stopped because I changed the uh, rotation of the clock. But sometimes a small novelty clock like this can make you scratch your head saying, what is wrong? And you do, you do everything that you think is right, but you got to go back to the drawing board and try to figure things out. So the movement would tick away without the pendulum on. It sit there and tick all day long. But when you put the pendulum on, the um, again, it would do one full rotation of the escapement wheel, and then it would the pendulum would it wouldn't stop. What happened is the pendulum would go to the left, and then it would go to the left one more time before the um, the pallets on the verge released. So it was getting in a bind. So I took a file to the escapement teeth and filed every one of the escapement teeth. Um, when you put the file on the escapement teeth, it should be smooth. And um, there was a few teeth that you could feel a burr in and if you look at the uh, second wheel here's a great wheel second wheel there is some pivot wear but this is a 30 hour movement um, it's lenient on the pivot wear and watch what happens when I rotate it it rotates perfectly the pivot stays in the center of that hole, you would call it. So now I'm going to put this gaming wheel back on and the bridge and crutch assembly back on and try it again. Also, um, I'm going to try to straighten out this wire. Typically on a clock, the crutch assembly, when it ticks, it'll be, if you were to draw an imaginary line down the center of the case, 
when it ticks, it'll be a certain distance to the left. And when it talks, it'll be that same distance to the right of that imaginary line that you drew down the center of the case. But so far on this clock, it stands to the left of that line in order to um, tick and talk. And I don't like that. Here you can see it's in beat. But if you don't have your the pendulum hook bent just right, it's going to shake off the crutch assembly, and you don't want that. It gives it an unsteady beat, and this is too open, so you bend it some, so it's tighter. And now you have a, a, a pendulum that's not shaking. So now it's time to put the hands back on this clock. Now the minute shaft has got a, a uh, rectangular shaft on it. It's not round. The hand should have a rectangular hole it's not a square hole it's more rectangular and I looked through my hands because the hand that came with it is a round hole I looked through my hands and this is the closest thing I have which is a set of blank hands that you'd have to drill a hole through however the hands are too long for this particular clock. Well, the nut that goes on this shaft is got a knurl, a, a tapered end on each side. And believe it or not, when you tighten this thing down, you can't set the hands like you normally do. You'd have to move the minute hand and then the hour hand where you want it. But when the thing is ticking away, the minute hand actually moves. And I'm going to show that to you. Right now I got it on the 12. And I got, and I'm putting pressure so it's ticking away. And as you can see, it's coming off the 12. And if I was to sit here and leave it on with pressure, it would go to the 1, etc. But, you know, just have to trust me that the minute hand is actually moving. So, um, you can use a round hole hand if you have the proper setup. To get the minute hand to move. Well, there it is, up and running. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And may God bless what should have been a short video end up being a long video.
When I started this video, I said it was going to be a short, quick video. It just goes to show you that sometimes things happen. Uh, trying to determine how to fix it. Um, I had to uh, do quite a bit to this little cl novelty clock. But I hope you all enjoyed this video. Uh, please leave me comments. Please give me a thumbs up. Uh, please subscribe to the video and uh, hopefully uh, I'll post another video uh, soon. Um, it all depends on my back, but I hope you all enjoyed this video. And may God bless each and every one of you.